Hi, this is Wanda from Go Laser Go, and today we're going to be reviewing the Creality Falcon 2 22 Watt Laser Engraving and Cutting Machine. Now, we've been very fortunate in having been sent one of these machines by Creality, and I'd like to thank them for giving us this opportunity to review their laser. We're going to be putting it through its paces to see how easy it is to put together and how well it performs. So let's take a look at what comes in the box. There is an operation guide and on the back is a handy little step-by-step -step flowchart. Then we have some stickers and of course a manual which is quite good as manuals go. There are nice clear images with step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up the machine. It was really pretty easy to follow. Now bear in mind that there is a lot more detailed information on the TF card that's included with the machine and I'll have more on that later. Now in this packet we have some risers, a USB cable, a brush and a few pieces of wood to practice with. Then we have the power cord and a pair of safety glasses. And of course we have the laser module. Now this is a 22 watt laser machine but Creality also have a 10 watt or a 40 watt version available for purchase and you can swap out the laser modules to suit your requirements. Now there's an air assist pump and it's great to see this as a standard inclusion. I'll talk more about the air assist pump later in the video. There's also a box filled with lots of bits and pieces including some allen wrenches, an open-ended wrench, a TF card and a TF card reader, a type A to type C adapter, two keys, a laser lens, some screws, a dust-free cloth, some cable straps and a pair of tweezers. And finally we have the other half of the power cord and the feet for the machine. Now in the same box is the machine itself and this is pretty awesome since the machine comes pretty much pre-built. We only had to add a few things to get it up and running. Now this is not something we've seen before in this type of frame style laser. Most come in a long thin box, I guess to save on shipping costs, with all the pieces ready to assemble and it can take up to an hour or more to put some of these machines together. So having parts of the machine pre-built not only reduces the amount of time that it takes to set it up, but also the amount of issues that can potentially occur when you're building a machine like this for yourself. Now you may notice this piece of foam here opens up to reveal a protective plate. Now I did watch a few older Creality unboxing videos and in this space there was also a honeycomb bed, so it appears that they don't include this as a standard anymore. However, I think I know why and you'll see that in a moment. Now this protective plate is quite sturdy. It's much better in comparison to some of the ones we received with our other machines. You can see the difference in thickness here between the Aetza plate and the Creality plate. So the machine is out of the box and it looks like a quality machine and it feels strong and sturdy. I do like the finish on the machine. The aluminium alloy gives it a nice sleek look and the cables are nice and tidy. We just have to set it up now and this is by far the fastest and easiest setup we have had for this type of frame style laser. Since it was pre-built all we needed to do was attach the air assist pump, the laser module and of course the feet. Now the air assist helps to dissipate the smoke, reduce the heat and remove any small bits of debris which helps to protect your laser lens and it gives your projects a nice clean result and you can see the difference here. Now this was super simple to connect. It was just a matter of inserting the tubing into the air assist pump and just make sure you remove the plug first. And then you plug the air assist cable into the side of your laser machine. Next we attach the laser module by sliding it onto the bracket and turning the thumb screws to hold it in place. Then we detach the tubing from the clips and plugged it into the top of the laser module. And finally we just needed to plug the module cable into the adapter board. We did have a bit of trouble for this for some reason and we fiddled about a bit but when we held it in just the right way suddenly it just worked and all came together. Now this is a big machine and it has a working area of 400mm by 410mm and it comes with a set of risers which allow you to raise the machine for when you're, you're cutting out thicker materials. Now we did receive a couple of optional accessories that we weren't actually expecting so I'd like to say a big thank you to Creality for that. The first accessory was a honeycomb bed. Now, as I've mentioned previously, we didn't receive one in the box with the laser, but received this one instead in its own separate box. And I think the reason they may have removed the original honeycomb bed from the box is that it is just too small for the size of this machine. This larger one fits the machine beautifully. 
However, you do have to purchase it as an optional accessory along with the enclosure, which is the second accessory that we received, but we'll go into that a little further on. Now with the honeycomb bed came a protective plate and this one was larger than the first one so we peeled off the protective coating and placed it onto our workspace beneath the laser and then we put the honeycomb bed on top. Now finally we just need to plug it into the power and turn it on. So all in all the assembly was super fast so a big thumbs up to Creality for making it so easy for the user to get the laser up and running. Now we needed to update the firmware and if you are English speaking, ignore the URL that they want to send you to in the manual as it goes to a Chinese translation and you'll have a hell of a time trying to figure out what to click on. Instead, go to creatitycloud.com and click on the downloads option from the top menu and select firmware. Now the firmware needs to be loaded onto the TF card which came in the box along with the TF reader and a USB-C to USB-A adapter. Now on that card is a ton of information and I have to say it's probably the best information I've seen from all the lasers we have received so far. It includes installation videos, sample files, recommended parameters, FAQs, error codes and much much more. I don't know why more companies don't do this, it would save on a ton of support queries going through to their help desk. Now, just before you rush off and update the TF card, you need to be aware that in order to update the firmware, you have to delete everything on that TF card. And this means you have to back up all that information somewhere, and at over a gig of data, that could be an issue for those that are low on space. I just saved it all to my Mac, and I intend to put it all back on the card once I update the firmware. Now there are two firmware files that you have to load onto the machine and they have to be done separately. So you have to turn off your machine, insert the card with the first firmware file into the side of the machine and then you turn on the machine and it will automatically update the firmware. Then you have to come back to your computer, format the card, load up the second file and then load it in the same way at the top of the laser module. Our software of choice is Lightburn, so we're going to open that up and connect the machine to the software. Now we've already connected the included USB cable to the computer, so now when we open Lightburn we can select Devices and then click on Import. Creality have included a configuration file on the TF card, so you just need to load that up to Lightburn. We started by engraving a test pattern using the material test option in Lightburn. This is a great way of testing out different speed and power settings to get the right settings for the type of material you will be cutting or engraving on. And you can see the results here. We created a test pattern for both engraving and cutting. We also tested the settings that Creality re recommends on their website and they actually ended up being the best settings so that is what we went with for our first project. We chose an American Eagle SVG, which we have used on a number of occasions now, and we wanted to test both the engraving and cutting, so we played around with the SVG image to enable it to engrave the eagle, and then cut out around it. And you can see the two parts here, one for the engraving part and one for the cutting part. For the engraving, we used 6000 speed and 25% power, and we had the air assist turned off for that. And for the cutting part, we went with 1000 speed and 100% power with the air assist turned on. We used one of the pieces of 2mm wood that came in the box with the machine for our test. So I placed it on the honeycomb bed and I used the focus block to get the right distance between the laser and the wood. Now this focus block is quite neat and it's not one that we've seen before. It includes three levels for different material thicknesses. Now we clicked on the frame button in Lightburn to better place the material and once we had it in the right spot we click start to begin the engraving. And just a tip here while we watch the laser do its thing, it's generally better to engrave first and then cut. If you cut first then the wood could fall out of place or move and affect the placement of the engraving. So once the engraving is done you can see how it now cuts around the edge of the eagle. And you can see how beautifully this engraved. It took about 12 minutes to both engrave and cut and I'm really impressed with the result. It was at this point that we thought we might try out the enclosure which helps to reduce the fumes and to vent the smoke. Now this was pretty easy to put together, we just connected the pipes as shown on the enclosed piece of paper and then slid the cover over the top of the frame. Then we just had to screw in the exhaust fan and plug it into our computer with the USB cable. Now this thing is big and unfortunately we don't have the space for it so it hangs over the edge of the table a bit. 
I do love it though. It does a great job of containing the smoke and exhausting it out. We cut a piece of 5mm wood which usually would generate a lot of smoke and you can see how it is pulling it out through the exhaust fan at the back. Now, so far we are loving this machine and there's so much more we haven't even covered in this video. However we will go into much more detail in part 2 including testing various materials. So thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed this video please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to look out for part 2 of this video.